Goodman right here. I just charged it up a few days ago and they said it froze up. They've charged it up a few times in the past, but it's lasted like the entire season. So I'm gonna put some uh, the digital Z-Man on it, see what it looks like. We can see already we have a 154 head pressure, 77 outdoor air temperature, 84 degrees. So we have seven degrees above ambient, which is way too low. This is 10 seer, so it should be probably 25 degrees above ambient. So we're way off. So it looks like low on charge. Let's look up our other. Yeah, we got 28.3. We should most likely be somewhere around 70 to 75 psi. Five degree saturation. Not good at all. We're gonna check it for additional leaks on this condenser. It's our condensate drain. Yeah, definitely leaking up there. <laughs> definitely leaking up there. I looked all over inside of this unit to look down there. The accumulator is about to rust out on the bottom. but it's actually not leaking, but I'm gonna advise they, if they wanna repair this thing by switching the evaporator, they need to switch that accumulator too. We can change it over to good old 407C. But I don't know if they're gonna go for that or not. Here's our air handler, the leaker, our coil there. I gotta get my model number off so I can check out the Johnstone website, see if they have one. Stuff. Well, I just left the call where we had a very extremely low refrigerant charge. It was charged up just the other day, and I guess the floodgates opened on that one because before it had been charged in December and April. And finally it just letting go, which is good because it's really, the guy was procrastinating to no end. I never seen anybody that would procrastinate quite this much on replacing a component in his system because he shelled out, you know, hundreds of dollars each time to recharge the thing didn't make any sense so now he's at a point where we have the evaporator is leaking like a sieve and uh, we can pick it up from the drain line I confirmed it you know a year or two ago up in the attic and then we have the accumulator which is not leaking but is rusted around the base of it where it's welded together and no doubt will either start leaking from that line or from the screw point on the bottom of it because they always seem to do that, and this one looks like it's right on the edge. In fact, when I opened up the top, I saw that dampness at the bottom. Since I guess it rained, I said, well, maybe that's oil. I was almost a little shocked when it didn't start uh, setting up the leak detector. But it will. <laughs> that's what I told the lady. I brought the lady outside, showed her, and said, you know, this is something that's not leaking, but I think it should be switched out because it's just it's going to leak. And it goes from, you know, if, you, if you're if you doing all that work, and since there's hardly any refrigerant left in it, and by the time I actually do the work, if I do the work, it probably won't have any refrigerant left in it because it'll have been sitting out for at least another three or four days because the coil wasn't in stock anyway. So we're going to change over to, I'm sure, 407C to save some money and to just because R22 is so insane right now anyway. Let's put 407C, put a little POE in it since it's been, you know, basically leaking refrigerant oil for the last three years, I'm sure it could use some oil. So we'll get all that stuff done. I'll quote them up. I, I pretty much know what it's going to cost. You know, we're looking at an evaporator coil replacement. It's going to be, you know, between fifteen and seventeen hundred dollars. And when you add the accumulator in it, you're adding, you know, three, four hundred more dollars. It's not a whole lot of cost. It's the only thing you're doing differently. Is cutting out the old one and putting a new one in because there's no refrigerant to take out because you're already you know, God's taking that out. So it's really easy just to add that on there, and it's you know it's really worthwhile because that sucker will leak, and they might get several more years out of it. I don't know. It's been running for two or three years with a high suction temperature, which is not good for the compressor. So it's really been going against the odds. It's 11 years old, so I don't know. I changed the evaporator, the compressor is going to ground the next week, I guarantee.